my vis version. It's just basically a parachute bibio or bibio hopper. And I've got one with a fluorescent post and one with a white post. Now it always pays to have do this, if, especially in a in a dull day or a, an area in the lock where you cast, you can't see the wing too well with the fly. And having fluorescent post does help. Uh, doesn't seem to affect it too much with the fish. But it's certainly worth having in the box of different colours. Now, the hook I'm using is a, so this is a hook, it's the Osprey hook. It's from Vineyards. It's Vineyards, the company. It's basically a wholesale company. It supplies a lot of the shops here in the UK and a few around the world as well. Now, let's call this a standard grub, but as you see there it says continuous bend. It's got a lovely bend in it, so you got a nice shape in your fly. And I found that when tying these flies, it, it just it adding the shape as well as it sits really well. Now, I'm just going to use a, a black, say, uni thread. It wind down until I'm in line with the point of the hook and remove the base piece. And then I'm going to bring it halfway back up. And this will give you the position for the wing. Now the, the material in the wing, in this case, this is a glow bright yarn. It's just a fluorescent pink. Now I usually cut away a bit, maybe two inches or so. There's a couple of ways you can tie this in. And both ways, like I'm going to show you two different ways. You simply can tie it on, three or four turns in, bring it up and post both these fibres together to form your wing. Or, which I think I like this way, if I untangle this, it's just to simply come from underneath, get both ends together, and then get it in the centre. Start off with a like a figure of eight, two or three times, and then post the wing. Come two or three times. There we are. And that sets it really well. I mean, it's up to yourself. It's up to the way you want to do it. And uh, both work. Now, I like to tie in the hackle, post, post the wing and the hackle together. The, the basically, what happens is when you're winding a parachute hackle, you do a turn, your neck should be underneath. So, if obviously you take the hackle up, the only way you're going to wind is coming down, so it makes the tying the fly very easy. You look in the width of the, if you look at the hackle length, fibre length, at least the hook. So you put the stem in the centre, should fit in, it's fine. You can have them sh to suit yourself, it's up to you. I mean, that's the way I like to do it. Now, I'm bearing some of the stem. Now, this is a saddle hackle, it's a, a whitened saddle. A Hebert Miner, it's a nice, it's a nice hackle to use for parachute flies. Now just take your thread up, nice and tight, and then come back down. As I said, take your hackle up with it, and then you see the stems at the back. And all you do then is continue down, tying this in. Now for the rib, I'm using this. This is a Opal Mirage, a medium one. And what I do is I take some off and I stretch it. Give it a wee stretch and it goes a blue colour. And it reduces by at least a third. So it makes for a nice rib and adds a bit of colour to this fly. Just carry on down. Now I would suggest that you sometimes tie some without a flashy rib. Um, because the fish Get a wee bit shy to flash, uh, it's always good to have something different, something without it. But anyway, I'm going to use a black seals fur for the body. Slide it up. Put it on nice and thin, just to form. Now I'm representing more midge than anything with this body, nice and slim. Just work it up. Form some sort of taper, just allow it. 
Just this build one. it up. I need a tiny bit more just to finish off. Now this is me up in line with the point of the hook and then I bring my rib up. Just work your way up. Good half a dozen times. Cross your thread and secure. Trim away the waist. Now if you're going to put legs on this fly, this is the time to do it. And I'm using, this is the pre-knotted pheasant tail legs dyed black. I take two from either side. So I'll just get two good ones. Set them down. The reason I like to take two from either side, you'll find the set a wee bit better for you. Get the shape that you like. Now, uh, whether you want it underneath or just on the side, just slightly on the side, I like it. And about the full length of the body, or the hook. There we are, get my other two. Get them to sit the way you want, twist them round to sit. Same length, just hold them on the side. And then secure them in. Let me quick look. I'll do fine. So you can have them underneath if you want, it's up to you. Some people do like them underneath. Just make sure it's secure. Then I'm going to get some red seals for. Or as I say, you can use a good sub is SLF. That's a nice material, it's a nice this material to use and it, it does catch fish so and then form the first part of the thorax which is going to be red which is the bibial colours which are black, red, black now what I'm going to do here is form the hackle I'm going to tie it, just basically work my way down one turn under the other and you put in as much hackle as you feel you would like, I think around about half a dozen turns or so is plenty. It depends on the hackle as well. There's a lot of reasons why you feel that'd be enough, and that's okay. Now what I don't normally do is pull back the fibres. With these two fingers here, I hold the hackle. You may not see that. And then come up and catch them in with the turn of thread. Nice and tight. Trim away the excess. Make sure they pull the hackle fibers back out of the way, tie it in. I found this to be really strong and quick way of doing it. It's just something I like doing. And then finish off the towards the head a wee bit of dubbing. Black dubbing in this case. So that'll be your black, red, black. Can lift it up. I usually like to go down and come back through it with the thread. A wee check just to see how it's sitting before I go any further. Because sometimes the dubbing will lift the hackles too much. Or the hackle fibres. Yeah, that's okay. Tiny bit of varnish onto the thread. And then just straight on the wet finish. And make sure you pull the fibres back. And then wet finish. And trim. Get your wing length. Again, it's as long as you want it to be, uh, or shorter as to be, uh, it's up to yourself. But to start off with, I would say probably if you hold it towards the back of the hook and line with the back of the hook and then trim. There we are. Now, to make it a tiny bit more secure, what you can do with your hackle is get some a light resin. Just pull the wing down and just touch it in at the roots here. Allow it to soak in. Don't want it to go any further than just in at the, the root of the wing. And into the stem of the hackle, just at that point there. 
and then lift it straight up and then get your torch and set your resin and there we are and that's your basically it's a, a bibio hopper the parachute hackle and with the high vis wing as I say you can you can have the, the white version as well depends as I say in the light conditions uh, certainly having them different colours makes a makes a difference if you're struggling and you get older and age you, you tend to find it a wee bit harder to see some flies and obviously having a fluorescent pink like that you certainly can see that.